Welcome in to the last race by race preview for the current season in Hong Kong. Paul Lally is here for meeting number 88, 11 races, and we are on the A course with a four o'clock start. The opening race being a class five over the 1200. Class droppers, one, two, three, and four. Goodview Glory's a last start. Winner goes up five pounds for it. E Talent's been back to the trials, but has been disappointing on race day. Rattan World has the blinkers going back on. Turf appearance for Super Joy. Regency Happy Stars won a trial since his last start in Dragon Kingdom. Coming back from the 1400 metres last time, but he's a noted go forward horse and will lead if everything goes his way, Paul. Yeah, look, I think Dylan Moe will have a plan, just go straight to the front. That's what this horse really likes to do. Uh, Super Elite can go forward. Chair for South uh, is another one that can go forward. Joyful Life, uh, he goes forward as well but he's drawn wide he might be looking for a little bit of cover alloy king won't be too far away and last start winner good view glory should get a nice run as well and here is that last start win of good view glory this was over a thousand meters at happy valley in the past when he stepped up to 1200 meters he hasn't quite been as sharp but he's obviously a bit more fitter and has more ring craft now up to start number 14. Yeah, look, he has run third in Class 4 before, so that was off a 47 rating. He's uh, now won here in Class 5. And the way he finished off, he looks like it shouldn't be a problem. Happy Tango's run well once again since. So, look, I think he's found an, an equally weak race, this one. Chief of South in our next replay. He's trialled well recently. This run at Happy Valley is uh, it's actually Shard 10. I keep forgetting they run into lights now at the weekend. Looked like uh, Happy Valley lights there for a moment. But Chief of South ran fourth behind Tactical Command. He had trial well leading into this race and uh, the track was rated as yielding for this. He's only had two starts at Charton and he's been placed on uh, both occasions. So look, I'm going to include him. He just needed a bit of luck from barrier number 10. But I think he can get a nice enough, uh, a nice enough run there and um, finish off uh, nicely. So if he gets that cover, then uh, I think he's a good chance. Karen Steetman bought him for Frankie Law. And our final replay is a trial of Super Elite, who's having his second start for David Hall. He ran 10th first up, and then uh, he ends up winning this trial. It was up at Chung Fa. Yeah, so a nice enough trial uh, for him. He was pushed out to win the trial, though. Uh, this was on the all-weather. He has to come onto the turf. He's by uh, deep field. He's got Hugh Bowman aboard. He's drawn barrier number seven. I'd just like to see him do it on race day. That, that's the only thing for me. But look, there was nothing wrong with the trial, and he did win, win the trial well. That is a breakdown of the Mr. Award handicap race number one. Good view glory. Is he good enough to go back to back? Yeah, look, I, I think he's found a, a, a race where it's possible to do that. So he's on top. A Dragon Kingdom from the front. Uh, he can be tough to run down on occasions. And his last couple of runs, he's stuck on pretty well. Chair for South. And put Rat and Weld in. He's a course and distance winner as well. 5, 13, 7 and 9. Paul with Andrea at Zadie and Dennis Ship to win the first race at Shah Tin on Sunday. Race number two, this is a good quality class to over 1,200 metres. Not big in numbers, but it's still a good feel with packing treadmill at the top of the book of five-time winners. So is Duke Wai as horse number two. Superb Capitalist has won two from his last three. Harmony and Blessed, he's run top three his last four starts. Call Me Glories and James Tack come up in great on the back of wins. And Beauty Waves has had two starts for two placings here over the 1,200 metres. The speed map, Paul, has the three and the five heading forward, but the four can go forward too. He can, he, he's got really good pace. So uh, there's gonna be, uh, even though it's a small field, there should be some good pace in here. Call me glorious, little the way last time, but superb capitalist, we know he can be fast out, but he has missed the start on occasion. So if he does, that'll really help Call Me Glorious and it will help Harmony and Bless. James Tack's been racing well, as is packing treadmill. Beauty Waves and Duke Wire, I think, is gonna be outpacing the early part of the race. More from Paul shortly. Firstly, though, Nick with the interviews talking to the rider of Packing Treadmill, Lyle Hewitson. Lyle, we get towards the end of the season. One more meeting to come. And, well, uh, Francis Loy has rolled the, the warrior out for you. Packing Treadmill, a horse you know really well. And he's, uh, he's continuing to race well. Yeah, he is. Uh, firstly, I've, of course, got to be grateful to Francis. He's given me a lot of support this season. And I've sent some really nice horses. But it's, it's these type of horses that have, have been... A pleasure to work with that step out every time and, and give you give you a run for their money so um, yeah great to be back aboard him he's uh, honest as the day is long and um, he will give another good account of himself that latest run Lyle I mean it, it was a good effort behind Moog and they've actually put him up another two pound now back to triple figures of a hundred so it was a very commendable run in defeat yeah uh, he's probably his own worst nightmare because he, he doesn't know how to run a bad race so 
he either stays the same or creeps up in the handicap every time he steps out. But um, with that said, he deserves his rating and um, I'm sure he can run to it once again. He's a bit versatile as far as tactics are concerned, but you're drawn one, so I guess if you did want to roll forward and sort of make it as he has done, that gives you a good place to be. Yeah, uh, look, uh, I'll have to look into it a bit more in depth, but looking at this field, um, there's a lot of speed in it. So at least from draw one, it means that I can be as close as I, I want to be, but um, probably it'll be just behind the speed and, and stalking him for, for uh, a late sprint. You mentioned Francis Lowe. You must touch upon him, obviously, aspirations to be to be champion trainer. You've ridden 14 of his 66 winners this year. I think it's around about 21% or thereabouts. So the connection's been a good one. But um, what is it about riding these horses for Francis? He's had a, a great season, and um, I guess you'd, you'd love to play your part in helping him be champion. Yeah, that's an interesting stat. Um, but it has felt like it's gone real real nice together. We've had a great relationship and um, between him and, and Vincent. Uh, they are they're just a, a pleasure to, to work with. So... Um, it's been been easy, smooth sailing, um, and 21% could could have easily been closer to 30 odd with with all the close seconds in between. But um, yeah, that's racing, and hopefully we can build on this for next season as well. Yeah, you won't like me to remind you. I think it was 17 seconds. And what about you? Um, your season, obviously 40 winners. Um, it's been a, a good, solid season. Yeah, um, I, I could say uh, I'm happy, but not content. We always want more. Um, but one thing I can say is I think. In comparison to the last couple of seasons, we've, we've seen a bigger spread between the top 10 now, um, and that means a few less winners for everyone. So I think 40 is, um, is, a, is a reasonable amount, and uh, just have to try and look to, to go past the 50 again um, next season. And that is Alal talking about packing treadmill poor. We've got a couple of speedsters in our first replay, and this one is definitely at Happy Valley with Harmony and Blessed leading. Superb capitalist in behind the speed. He wasn't terrific out this night either. Harmony and Blessed beaten by a very, very informed horse. Yeah, definitely. Now, he uh, he missed the start, Superb capitalist. So Harmony and Blessed got that run uh, through on the inside, made it a lot easier. Now, Harmony and Blessed has drawn barrier number six, Superb capitalist three. So a lot's going to uh, depend on how Superb capitalist does jump in this race but uh, you can see him finishing off well it was a good run from both of them it was that is for sure now uh, this despite don't adjust your television your computer monitor this is exactly how it is with uh, the weather conditions that call me glorious sailed through last time to win He's a very promising horse, and uh, we know he's equally adept, Paul, on top of the ground. Yeah, he is. Look, he, he was probably a little bit flattered here because of the weather, but look, he, as you say, he did win really nicely the start before. He's won three of his five starts with a second and a fourth, so he's a horse going really well at the moment, and uh, he just keeps thriving. Francis Loy, obviously, game for the title. He looks the one to beat, but I don't think he's going to be a, a fancy price. James Tack is another promising horse. He was a silly price here because things didn't go his way the start prior where he was slow out, better away this day. And he went off at double figures amazingly. He too's a very promising horse. Yeah, look, I think he's one of the main dangers uh, in the race actually. And look, he was just cruising up here. Uh, Lucy in the Sky was uh, was the favourite. Was Lucy in the Sky the favourite maybe? But did, did beat uh, this horse so easily. Uh, and won really nicely. So he's another one that's been going strength for strength. He's had four wins from his nine starts. So he's a really progressive horse, James Tack. That was the race Lucy in the Sky was 1.5, 1 1.4, wasn't it? Yeah, wasn't that's right. yeah. yeah, very short. Yeah. And James Tack was able to hold him uh, comfortably. It's a class two, so we know it's a good field. Yeah, a really good field. And uh, Call Me Glorious, I think, very progressive. And uh, he can win. So he's on top. James Tack, we just saw a second. Packing tre Treadmill. Uh, look, he's coming back to class two. He's one off 93. He's still up. Uh, in the ratings to 100 and Beauty Waves is better at Happy Valley statistics will show you but coming in here the lightweight and the low draw I've included him as well 5617 Paul with Francis Loy to draw level with Pierre Rong by winning race 2 with Call Me Glorious Class 5, 1400 metres, race number three, an invincible missile is on the class drop into this grade for the first time. The concentration had no luck last time. Uh, we've got uh, E Glory, who's second up. Asian One's on an eight day backup. Perfect Peaches plays three from five for the new stable. Medical Eat makes another appearance. Jim Wan Glory is a two time course and distance winner. And Double Show coming back from the 1650 at Happy Valley of last time. The concentration, Jim Wan Glory spots one two here for. Yeah, they like to lead. Um, Aromatica should get a lovely run in behind as well. Speedster, likewise, he won't be far away. California Icon, he'll just need a bit of luck. E Glory, Double show Asian ones drawn wide back to superb daddy invincible missile and the rest get back 
Invincible Missile, he was running on last time in Class 4. He's always slow out of the gates, Paul, but he makes up an enormous amount of ground here. Yeah, really eye-catching. Coming into Class 5 for the first time, he should be too good for Class 5. He's one-off ratings in the 80, 80s before, a recent win of 71. Now he's down to this rating of 40, comes into this grade for the first time. And uh, look, he's he's looked, and it, this is a really good run in Class 4. There's not this these type of horses in this race. Of course, Mission Voice uh, did win the race, but... Um, a nice run from him, and he looks tough to beat. Hugh Bowman is one for one on Invincible Missile also. Aromatic has found some form since he's dropped down. Asian one had his chance. He was an all-weather winner a couple of starts ago, but uh, Aromatica picks up another placing here. Yeah, I'm just worried about the draw for Asian one. He's drawn barrier 10, so I didn't put him in, but I did put Aromatica in. He's drawn nicely in barrier number four. Uh, look, he's yet to win here from his 11 starts, but he has been placed on two of those occasions. Uh, Harry Bentley from Fourier will get his opportunity, uh, no doubt, with the run. So, yeah, he goes in for me, Aromatica. Chris so trains him, and uh, Chris had a stack of placings at Happy Valley. Went so close on several times on a Wednesday night. He'll prepare Aromatica in the third. One more race to have a look at. There's heaps here. The Perfect Peach looks to be getting close to a win. Speed Star's been beaten favourite his last two. Medical Elite's run fourth his last couple of times, also around Chartin. Also got Chiron, E Glory, and Maximise Heart in this replay. Yeah, it's a superstar and Perfect Peach, the two I'll take out of this. Perfect Peach um, got that perfect run on the inside, and uh, he did finish off uh, the race nicely here. So, look, he's uh, he's racing well at the moment, uh, Speedster, and the Perfect Peach down the outside as well. You can see him finishing off in those orange colours. Stable's going well at the moment. So both Speedster and Perfect Peach should definitely get their opportunities. And Michael Chang, the trainer of a Perfect Peach, as we see him run second into Harmony and Home. Veteran status, but managed to get another win in that race. So what's your top four, Paul? Going to go with the one on top here. Yeah, I thought Invincible Missile can win this coming down in grade. A perfect Peach, Speedstar and Aromatica. We managed to talk about all those. One, seven, ten, three. Class dropper for Paul. Number one, Invincible Missile to win race number three. Race number four is the longest race on the program. It's over 1,800 metres, and it is an event, which is a class four. Devil Dom's on the class drop. Affordable has the cheek pieces off and the blinkers going on. Mission Bravo, blinkers off. Pacifiers for the first time. Reach Goals had two trials since we last saw him. He is wearing cheek pieces for the first time. Storm Winner has a tongue tie going on. Gold Tack Race wide at Happy Valley last start, and Forever Folks has placed two for four over the course and distance. Uh, good, good leads here, Paul, over Forever Glorious, who's been racing well. Yeah, so uh, Francis Louis, he trains Forever Glorious. Uh, Chateau Le Piche has been going forward in his races. So, look, there's a big run to that first bend. So I think horses that do go forward will be trying to um, sort of tuck in before that bend. Storm winner, affordable uh, from a bit of draw, I think will be a little bit more positive. A volcanic Spark will look for some um, uh, cover as well, reach gold. Mission Bravo, he's just lost all his early speed. He has, and he's switching to the turf for a rare appearance. He's Mission Bravo. Here is Forever Glorious running second. Storm winner third. This was a much better run from him. Flying Silver fifth. Now, both Storm winner and Flying Silver have both had two trials since this race also. Yeah, look, I don't mind Forever Glorious. He's only had four goes over the 1,800 metres at Charlton and has won one and been placed in the other. So I think he's more than capable as Forever Glorious. Uh, obviously, this race here at... Um at uh, Happy Valley, but uh, coming back to Shartin holds no fears for him. So he's the main one I'll take out of this. He's had another race since then too, Forever Glorious, and this is it. It was also over at Happy Valley. He's been to Shartin uh, 14 times. He has won course and distance, and he's only got uh, one win and one placing to his name at the bigger track. Yeah, he has, but uh, that was over the uh, 1800. So, uh, look, he's at the right distance. He's a, there's a big run to the first band, and he was beaten by an informed horse here as well in Joy of Spring, who's now won a cup on the row. So, look, he's in good form at the moment, so I think he's, uh, he'll, he's going to definitely get his chance. That is forever glorious. He's going in the selections. Good, good. Ran second last time. He follows the leader for home here. 
and he has form around Joy of Spring too. Volcanic Spark doing what Volcanic Spark always does, running on with Next Time written all over him. Yeah, exactly. He was a little bit unlucky, uh, Volcanic Spark, in this race. It just took him a while to clear traffic, and he finished off this race nicely. A uh, good, good. It was a lot better run from him as well. Again, this is Joy of Spring winning, so you can sort of get a line through them. So look, I'm, I'm going to put both Volcanic Spark and Good, good in the race. In fact, I think they can Quinella the race, these two. Good Goods had a typical quiet John Zyre's trial since that last start second. Also, what's the top four for race number four? We'll go with Volcanic Spark. Let's see um, over this 1,800 metres he can get his win. Uh, good Good, the hardest to beat forever glorious. And Storm Winner, we talked about him earlier on. It was a lot better run from him last time. 4, 9, 3 and 10. And Paul with Volcanic Spark to make it a winning second go over 1,800 metres for the Ricky U train galloper. Number of first starters line up in the fifth, which is to be run over the 1,200 metres. It's a class four with Kay Warrior now with Beno Young. Crossover nose band comes off. Sugar Ball raced wide last time at the Valley. We've got uh, Blinkers going on, deal completed. First starters, Lucky Generations, a Packing Angel and X Factor. Fung has Blinkers and a tongue tie on. And Fun and Glory is a two-time course and distance winner. Speed here, Paul from Kaying Warrior and Omakase. Yeah, look, they're both drawn wide, but they're the, they look like the, the two that can lead in this race. I think they'll come across together and share the lead. Uh, Packing Angel can get in just behind with Fun and Glory. should get a lovely run. Uh, first Love won't be too far away. The first start is X Factor, Lucky Generation. Haven't shown too much speed in their trials. And Lord of the Ring, Lord of the Rose even, not the ring. Lord of the Rose uh, towards the back there. He's coming up from Griffin class. We start with the first love who's had one start, runs a fifth in it. This was over the 1,200 metres. Track rated good from barrier seven. Draws two. Zach Purton rides at uh, outing number two for first love. Yeah, it looks a good race, this one, as well, uh, that he's come out of uh, first love. Uh, Harold Wynn and Giant Leap won on, uh, on a Wednesday night, so uh, he's come out on one. Uh, so it was a nice debut from the source of his their natural improvement, which they probably is have from barrier number two. He's going to finish right in the placings as well. So I, 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 I'm, uh, I'm going to include him. I think he's one of the main chances. And he's definitely going in his first love. What about Kaying Warrior? He's offered to deliver so often. He always trials well. He's had a stable change now. Does have a wide draw, beaten odds on favourites at his last two starts. I'm going to give him another chance on a new stable because sometimes uh, those changes uh, can sort of spark a horse up. It, it, it's the stamina that's been a little query with him, but uh, we'll see what's happened with the new stable here. And I thought the trial was easy. He just won really well this trial. So, look, he's got to overcome this wide draw barrier 13, but we'll give him a chance. Also runs second in that trial and one in the green on the outside. Both trialled at Sha Tin on Friday and did it well too. Uh, that was a King of Dubai and El Sonzo. Lucky Generations has had five trials. This is his last one. He runs a third in it, beaten five lengths behind Bit Superstar, who we see later on on the program. Yeah, so Shadow Roll, Chang Tai goes on him, barrier number four. Uh, he's by Russian Revolution, this horse. I was happy to watch him on his uh, debut run uh, here. I think he'll probably be one for next season, but as you can see, he, he sort of held his ground on this draw. He did, and that is uh, the first of the first starters we look at. One more is Packing Angel. Now, Lyle Hewitson rides him for Francis Lewis, same colours as what Packing Treadmill wears. He ran sixth behind Gallant Valor in his first trial. Trials impressively here, he leads uh, all of the way to beat Holy Power, but he's only had the two trials. Yeah, I just wonder if it was a little bit rushed here. Of course, Francis came for the Premiership there, but the, the trial was nicely enough. The tongue tie will go on. But looking at his breeding, he's by shocking out of Asaki's secret. So I just wonder if this is going to be too short for him. My, my sort of comments next to him was uh, a horse that looks like he needs a lot further. We'll see what he can do in the race and uh, whatever he does, expect better going forward from packing Angel, but Kane Warrior gets a chance. We'll give him a chance. I mean, I know the punters have in the past because he's been beaten favourite at odds on a couple of times. New stable. We'll see if he can get the job done. First love, the danger. View of the world, now he finished off strongly uh, in his debut run. And Fun and Glory should get a, a good run and he's really well rated. One four seven eleven. That is the preview for race number five. It is the first leg of the Triple Trio.
race number six now. This is the running of the Medic Kingdom Handicap. There's a scratching. Please take note. Number 14, Mr Fox is out. Amazing run. Karis Teton rides for David Hayes is the new addition to the field. The Absolute has the cheek pieces and the crossover noseband going on. Fortune Whiskey stepping up to 1,400 metres. Happy Park on debut of five trials. Dragon Four Seas has the blinkers first time. We've got the Azure who's on the improve. Happy Daily well rated and a firm has placed two from three over the Shard 10 at 1,400 metres. Speed map here, Paul, has the big chestnut in front of Firm. Yeah, Firm should uh, be able to lead here. The absolute, uh, he likes to go uh, forward. He won't be too far away. Uh, Happy Daily, he's got a lot better draw. He should get a nice run. Happy Park, the first artist, and a little bit of speed in his trials. Brilliant Express should get a, a nice run. Uh, Victorian back to the Azure and uh, Fortune Whiskey, he gets back. Nikki's back to talk to the rider of Brilliant Express. It is Hugh Bowman. Huey, Brilliant Express, uh, one of your rides at the, the final meeting of the season. Uh, he's only had the, the two starts to date, this three-year-old, but he's, he's looking progressive. Yeah, he certainly is. He's a horse that gives me a really good feel. Uh, we expected him to be a bit rusty first time out, and that was the case. He improved with his second outing, and stepping up slightly in distance, I think we could expect a pretty forward showing come the weekend. He looks you the sort of the epitome of a John Size progressing sort of type of horse, and you, you have trialled him recently as well. He, he looked to, to trial nicely too. Yes, he trialled well, and he's going well. He's a he really is a nice horse, and looking forward to what he might be able to do next season. But uh, he seems to it appears to be a pretty good arrangement for him this weekend, and with those couple of runs under his belt, he should be starting to understand his job now. No time wasted going up in Trevon. He's looked with both of those 1,200 metre runs that he's sort of crying out for that extra furlong at very least. Yes, and I think we'll find he will run further in time. But, you know, he's still learning, as I said. But he's had the benefit of a couple of runs and his trial the other day was pretty good. So uh, he's got the attractive barrier one, which is always a, uh, an assistance. So, yeah, look, things are looking good for him. It was a good trial by a brilliant Express. We move on, Paul, to our first replay, which is Fighting Machine, who runs fifth here. This was over 1,400 metres. He runs off a rating of 55. The course and distance win was off 51. Yeah, so he's still slightly higher than that. He's been, he has beaten favourite last time, and he was second favourite the time before. Look, he gets back, he runs on. I'm just worried about barrier number 10 for him. He'll probably come up unders as well with the Pierre and uh, Zach. Uh, teaming up as uh, here in this race. So, look, I, I didn't get him in in the end. I, I thought he'd be running on strongly, but, um, yeah, he didn't make it for me. Needs to get a little further down in the rating points by the sounds of it for Paul with Fighting Machine. Affirm, he'll give you a sight. He runs fourth here. He stays uh, at Shah 10, but steps up to the 1,400 metres, a distance where he's had uh, three starts for two placings. Yeah, he's been placed a couple of times, has Affirm. So well, I think the further the better for him. You know, even when he gets up even further uh, to the 16, 1,600 as well. He, another one, as you say, he'll give you a good sight in front. Uh, look, I, he again was on the cusp but didn't quite make it but it was you can see him just swamp late here in this race yep Luke Ferraris takes the ride on him and he's been uh, riding well the last few weeks has Luke especially in the front runners on to uh, the Azure you were with him last time here he is running fourth this was over 1650 metres it was at Happy Valley so it's a drop back in trip but he's definitely going the right way isn't he yeah look he uh, still a 14 I think will be fine for him as well um look yeah he was 25 to 1 this day and uh he runs fourth but uh he's got barrier number nine I think he can probably tuck in midfield there as well and I like the way he finished off this race strongly enough so uh, by rote he's had the three starts and he seems to be going the right way as you said and Northern Beast is now back-to-back -back winner mm. coming out of that race too. Is he on top, the Azure? Yeah, we'll stick with him. Uh, he was uh, he ran well last time, so I think he's on top. The Absolute can put himself right in the race. Brilliant Express and a really well-rated horse now. Happy day, he's drawn a lot better. 11, 2, 7 and 12. It's race six and it's the first leg of six up and Paul's with number 11, the Azure. Race number seven has an inform horse at the top of the book and a horse that doesn't look too far off his first win just below. It's over the 1,400 metres and it's top peak aiming for a hat trick. Steps ahead, it's placed all three starts. Beautiful win is a first starter who's had seven trials. Foolish Heart has the tongue tie coming off. Mufafa wears a hood for the first time. Holy Power goes 1,800 metres at Happy Valley to 1,400 at Shah 10. 
and Link is minus a tongue tie. Young Horizon has won a trial since his last start. New Farfa has shown plenty of speed in his trials, Paul. He's only had the two race day starts, but he did share the lead on debut. He did. I don't think he'll go forward from his draw. Holy Power has gone forward in the past. He should get a nice run. Young Horizon, another one that's gone forward. And top peak from a wide draw. Might just have to work, but I think he probably can get outside the leader. Uh, Fuller's Heart, now he's drawn a lot better and uh, steps ahead, uh, who would likely be the favourite to get a nice run. Top peak winning from gates six and seven at his last two. He draws 12 here, is beautifully ridden by Jerry Chia to get him home this day. 133 pounds he will carry, that's six more than this win. Can he go on with it? Look, I've got him in, but I just think it's going to be a lot difficult from barrier 12. I mean, he had good runs here and he's, and he's won uh, nicely in both occasions. He's, he's really found some form. Bit Jumbo Fortune uh, here and Forerunner as well in the start before and Forerunner's run well since. So, look, he, he's a horse that uh, seems to have really uh, hit his stride. But I, there's a couple of things against him in this race. All right, so well, we'll find out who's in to beat Top Peak and stop that winning run at two steps ahead. Might very well be that horse, Paul. He runs third here, that Storming Dragon, who gets run down by Greenwich. He was in front of those two horses not too far past the post steps ahead. Yeah, look, he's been a little bit costly, this horse. He's uh, been beaten favourite here at 2.4. He was 2.8 the start before, but in saying that, he he just he finished off the race nicely enough. Uh, and uh, look, he's a horse that is going well at the moment. So look, he's he looks going to be tough to beat, but uh, he definitely goes. And I thought Foolish Heart, um, he ran ninth in this race, but he's going to be a lot closer in the run with a better draw. Michael Chang at trains him. One more to have a look at. It is Family Jewel who runs fourth over the 1,200 metres. This was on a rain-affected track. Extra 200 metres here. And we know that Ballistic Win, who's just getting to the outside now, has come out one impressively since. Yeah, he has. And uh, fun and fun together in front there. He's run well since as well. Look, um, Family Jewel, only one of them, the Family Jewel. But he, he finishes off really nicely here in this race. It was a good uh, debut run from him. He ran fourth, stepping up to 1,400 metres. Looks ideal for him as well. Uh, but there was a bit of rain round, so that's just the only query. But I really like the way he finished his race off. He's a gelding, so he's got no jewels. Um, who are the selections for race seven? I'm going to go with Steps Ahead on top. So uh, he's he's on top to beat the family jewel. Look, Foolish Heart, I think he's going to run better at a price and top peak in there for fourth. Two, four, four, two, four, five, one. The consistent Steps Ahead to go home. A winner for Paul in race number seven at Sha Tin. Race number eight is the trophy race on Sunday, the running of the Hong Kong Racehorse Owners Association Trophy in moments in time. He's coming off a third at Happy Valley last time. Sword Point, he's only having his second start, which is not a group race this season. Ching Ching Glory blinkers off, visor on. Telecom Fighters has the cheek pieces removed. All for St Paul's is a five-time winner over the 1,600 metres. And the best peach is dropping back from the 1,800 metres of last start. Telecom Fighters, Paul leads all for St Paul's and Sword Points. Yeah, six of these ten runners like to lead, so there should be a bit of pace in the race, but Telecom Fighters, I think, has got the the most pace. Uh, all for St Paul's will probably try and take him on there. Sword Point's a stable mate of all St Paul's so they won't want to get into a speed battle. Chang Tin Glory can just sit him behind the pace moments in time likewise. Uh, Money Catch is out of form at the moment. Uh, CP Brave back to Golden Scenery and the best peach should enjoy all the pace in this race. Our first replay is moments in time at Happy Valley. He runs third here. Money Catcher had a great run on the rail and just couldn't go on with it and Telecom Fighters leads up. Now, Moments in Time is uh, a horse that's had his last two starts at Shah Tin two and three runs ago. Fourth in the Group 3 Queen Mother Memorial, then fourth in the Group 1 Champions in Chater, and that was behind Rebels Romance. He's found form at the Valley Pool and you can see the times they went in this race at the smaller track about coming back to Sha Tin. Yeah, look, I'm not too worried about Sha Tin because uh, he has um, raced really well there in the past, as you say, at the highest level as well. This is a lot easier. Uh, the 1600 is probably just at the, 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 the sort of the bottom of a spectrum there, distance-wise. But um, look, he's uh, he had to work in the mid stages of this race, so it was a good run under the circumstances. That is moments in time. Premier Plate is our second replay. Cheng Cheng Glory fourth off for St Paul's Sword Point both fade. CP Braves raced well, but 1800 metres is where he has been operating better at. 
And uh, as you saw on the speed map, the best peach is possibly going to get a good trip with the pace in the race. He should do. Um, I do like Chen Chen Glory in this race, though. He's back to his pet distance, 1,600 metres. He's won five of his eight goes over it. The horse has had a fantastic season. And uh, look, I think I think he can win this race. Uh, the 1,600 looks ideal for him. And uh, he was only sort of nab late here from these horses down the outside. One of them, of course, being Galaxy Patch. And what a horse. He looks like he's going to be Galaxy Patch. He's just getting better and better and so versatile. Some trial form now, and we head to Chung Fa for this. This is the Golden Scenery. Wunderbar and Duke Wai are the other two horses in this trial. He never leaves the rail and isn't really asked to do anything in it either. No, so just a jump out really, wasn't it, with these three horses? Look, he's just sort of out of form a little bit. He, he has won a couple this season, but they were earlier in the season. And look, I just wonder if he's at his mark at the moment. So look, I, I didn't put him in, but he can surprise uh, occasionally, can the Golden Scenery. As a look at him through on the inside, Tony Cruz trains him. Angus Chung will take a small claim on the Golden Scenery. So that has been race number eight. One of your favourites goes around here. Yeah, so he's on top, Chang Chang Glory. And look, he's been such a model of consistency over the mile, moments in time. The best peach and Atala Bagil both should get the race run to suit. 4 1 10 7. Paul giving Francis Lawyer a big day. He is the trainer of Chang Chang Glory. And race number nine now, so the first leg of the late treble and is over the 1400 and it's over the 1200 metres and a class three. Dream winner at the top of the book is a second up winner and unbeaten in this grade. Reward smiles on the class drop also. Sovereign fund goes to the 1200. We've got Silo making his Hong Kong debut as is Bits Superstar. Uh, Gormo Chun's had one start, he was beaten nine on debut. Montefruta comes onto the turf and packing Hermid was very impressive winning his first start at Happy Valley. That was down in grade. Super joy and fun. Paul, he's drawn barrier number 11, but he does have early speed. Yeah, I think he'll just press on and try and get to the lead. Excellent fight has finally got a barrier draw. He should be able to get a nice run. A bit superstar showing a bit in his trolls. He's a first starter. Dream winner's got pace. Packing Hermod should be able to get himself there into a nice position. Silo has tried well. Sovereign Fund, just the one start. Back to Viva Graciousness and Gorma Twin towards the back. We're heading to an interview first of all with the trainer of the newcomer Silo, Mark Newman with Nick. Mark Noonan, um, we're in the, the dying embers of the season, but we like to unearth a, an, an interesting newcomer, and you've probably got it on the card, Silo uh, from Singapore. Um, his form over there looked pretty handy. What more can you tell us? Yeah, look, he's got here and uh, acclimatised really quickly, uh, but coming out of Singapore where it's hot and humid all the time and coming in at this time of year, uh, it's probably suitable. Um, he's a very consistent horse. Um, eight starts in Singapore and, and hasn't missed a place so uh, he's certainly got enough talent and you know, I've been happy with his trials. I wanted to ask you about that acclimatisation because obviously there are certain similarities that can be drawn and as, you, as you've rightly mentioned coming in this time of year I, I guess he's probably found it easier than, than other horses coming from elsewhere would that be fair? Oh absolutely you know he came in here um, you know at a time when you know had similar horses coming in from Australia and you know the this time of year that they're, they're coming into their colder weather in Australia and those horses are, are you know got winter coats um, whereas he came in really good condition um, and he's adapted quickly. How, how have you um, sort of assessed his trials I mean he's, he's looked pretty good in them? Yeah I think he's improved uh, with each one um, a bit slow away in his first couple of trials but he's probably just a little bit fresh uh, he jumped quickly his last trial um, and look, I'd, I'd imagine from gate one, he'd be able to take up a reasonable position. And his work's been good, so I expect him to race well. Uh, Mark, how, how's he worked going this way around? Because this will be the first time that he'll race going this way around compared to Singapore. Yeah, look, a little bit foreign to him the first uh, few bits of work. Um, I've had a few rides on him myself. And um, generally, by the time he gets to the first corner, he's corrected himself. And uh, look, his last trial, he did everything right. So I'm not expecting that will be an issue. Comes in off a mark of 69, never easy. Good competitive race, this one, um, for the end of the season. But he's obviously of above average ability. Yeah, look, I wanted to get a run into him um, just because he's shown that he's ready. Um, he, uh, the form around his trials has been quite strong. Um, you know, the Chung Fa trial and uh, his trial here the other day. So um, I expect he'll run pretty well. 
he's just a three-year-old. Mark, just finally, you've, you've trialled a couple of nice three-year-olds, our final trials of the season here uh, this morning. You had King of Dubai and uh, the Alonso. Um, two horses I know that you're, you're pretty keen on. Yeah, both of them um, come here with sort of similar form lines um, in Australia. Um, both only one win, but pretty consistent in, in good company. Um, I've sort of kept them up to the mark all the way through and a third trial this morning. Um, so they'll be ready to go uh, probably late September, early October, uh, but both nice horses. That is Mark Newnham, who's had a great first season, but uh, he's going to bump into a smart one with Silo. Paul, if this win is anything to go by with the Norse messenger, Hermod. Packing Hermit, making it one for one at Happy Valley, and uh, Zach's going to put up a lightweight, so he's obviously got a very good opinion of him. Yeah, and it was a really good win from the horse. He, he, and the, the further they went, the better for him as well. He really was really professional, he stuck to the rail there, and finished off really strongly. Look, he's tough to oppose. Uh, this horse, and he, look, he won with plenty in hand, didn't he? He did, as he uh, switches across to the bigger circuit for the first time. Finally, we're going to look at the other first starter in the race, Bit Superstar, who's had six trials. His last two have been good. This is a trial win over Fashion Legend. He scores by a head. The one before this, he ran third behind full credit in King Miles. Yeah, who both come out and won on the weekend. So, look, there's, uh, the trial was good. He's had six of them, so he's had plenty of um, trials. He was just pushed out a little bit, just niggled a little bit towards the end of it, uh, I thought, but um, still trialled nice enough. So, uh, look, he's an interesting runner, definitely, with Pierre game for the title. No luck on Dobu with the draws. Barrier 14, one over 1,100 metres at Moe. Packing Hermit just too good for them? I think he is going to be. He, he's looked really good in uh, that uh, debut run for him. Look, excellent fighter. He's got a bit of draw, and he's really well rated at the moment. So I think he can uh, run a, a lot better race here. Uh, Sovereign Fun went well on his debut, hit the line strongly, and he's drawn nicely in barrier two. And then we'll put Silo in on a mine line just ahead of bit Superstar. 12-11-3-5. Paul giving Francis Lawyer a huge day to not only train plenty of winners, but also win the Premiership if uh, these selections are bang on. So race nine, number 12, Packing Hermit. Race number 10 is a class three and it's over the 1600 metres. Holy Lake at the top of the book. He's had two trials since his last start. They were pretty ordinary too. Torbjorn Prince goes to the 1600 metres. Fallon struggled a bit since the derby. Pray for Mers had only the two starts, fourth in that narrow second last time. The air won over 1,600 metres at Warwick Farm before he got here. Satirical fans' win was on the class drop, as was Aerials. And Smart City better last time at running fifth. I can comes up in great after a tough performance at Happy Valley last time. To the lead here, Paul, Aerial and Satirical fan. Both like to go forward. So does Torby and Prince, to be fair, but he's slightly back in trip here. Uh, 1600, he's led over the 18 uh, before. Pray for Mersh, will get a good run. Holy Lake likes to go forward. The air won't be far away. Brighton Heritance hit the line strongly at his last start, as did Great Achiever, as did Smart City. Uh, Fallon and Perfect Pairing will go back. Paul mentioned that run by Bright Inheritance last time. Nick spoke to his jockey, it's Harry Bentley. Harry, Bright Inheritance uh, will be one of your final rides uh, for the season at Sha Tin. And well, last time out, you ran a, a mighty race, not beaten far for third. Yeah, he ran a great race. Just uh, came with a wet sail down the outside and uh, gave me a great feel. He's got another really good gait, Harry. Uh, and that obviously makes your life that bit easier from one. Yeah, it does. I mean, he's not the fastest away, so um, it'll be hard to imagine he'd be able to get into the box seat from there, but um, it, it takes a, a few things out of the equation and uh, allows him to get onto the rail without doing too much. I know you've only ridden him the once, and that was last time he was a decent price. When he won, he was, he was massive, Oz, but he's certainly proven that that was no fluke. Yeah, exactly. I'd done a few trials on him before he first ran, and um, yeah, he, he, I have to say he, he gave me an OK feel, but, but nothing outstanding. But uh, to be fair, he seems to have improved with his racing and um, certainly gave me a good feel last time. But I hope he's just taken another step forward. You meet the runner-up, Pray for Mer, on, on the exact same terms. I guess you'd be looking forward to having a, another crack at him. There's obviously not a, a great deal between the pair. No, there wouldn't be an awful lot between them. And, um, yeah, I think uh, you know, both the horses are, are, are going on an upwards trajectory and um, it's going to be a decent race. 39 winners for Harry Bentley this season. How, how, does, uh, how does himself assess the, uh, the season? Season's been really good. I'm very happy with the, with the support I've had and... Um, feel like I'm, I'm certainly ending the season in, in good spirits and 
we'll be ready to hit the road running at the beginning of next season. But I'm very happy. I'd love to get that uh, 40 up, which uh, still gives me a chance going into the last meeting. And I'll be doing everything I can to get that. Obviously, getting on the, the group group race score sheet as well was obviously a, a big um, a big plus too. Absolutely. That was a, a good victory to have got and a um, nice one to have ticked off. So hopefully there are more to come next season. Harry Bentley there on Bright Inheritance. Paul, our replay is I can at Happy Valley. Big weight here. He is working to get forward outside of the speed as that whip goes flying, turning for home. He comes into a grade where he has struggled a bit lately, but this was a really good performance from him. Yeah, he's had three goes in the class and hasn't really featured that. And that was the, the little worry I had. He's also drawn barrier number 13. He's got to change courses and come to Chartin. So there was a few negatives, I thought, for ICANN. But in saying that, they were well clear. And Satanta has been in good form recently. Satanta has and been flying off a hot speed. Now, finally, we're going to Young Achievers Trial. Now, that is him right of screen. The other young horse in this is Young Horizon with the white cap. Shaken up a little bit late, but runs second behind Young Horizon as he closes down the outside. Yeah, look, he was wide in most of this trial, so he covered plenty of ground in it. You can see he's still going nicely enough. He hasn't really moved on the horse yet. and just starts to just give him a little bit of, of a flick up there, and you can see there was an immediate response there, so I thought it was a really good trial from him. He's going to go in for me. The German... Guineas winner was a young achiever prior to arriving. So that is the replays and Harry's thoughts for race 10. What's Paul's thoughts? Going to go with a, my long shot in this race. Now, he, he comes out of that race we saw in the interview, and that was Smart City. You can go back and listen to that interview with Harry. You can see the horse finishing off really nicely in there for fifth. That was his first step up to 1,600. Did win over 1,590 metres in Australia before he got here under the same name. A bright inheritance has been running well. Young achiever from that trial and Pray for Mer should get a really good run just in behind the pace. 12.637. The value for Paul Smart City, race 10, number 12 each way. We're all done with race number 11 getting underway at 20 minutes past 9 o'clock. Patch of Theta has the hood off. Beauty Fit won last weekend, carries an extra seven pounds. Golden Artie has the hood going back on. Amazing victory up in trip. Getty ups on the eight day back up. A little unlucky too late in that race. California deeply steps to 1400 metres. And Phantom Cyclone has a visor and a tongue tie on for the first time. Patch of Theta here, Paul. Uh, just off the speed behind Beauty Crescent, who's been so close to a win. He has, and look, massive action will lead. He's the, the normal leader. Uh, even over 1,400 metres, he should be able to get there. Beauty Fit, he's, he's got a new lease of life, and he jumps out of those gates well. Uh, Roman Crown, as you say, I thought the patch of theatre would get a really good run. Amazing victory. Giddy up, was a bit unlucky at his last start, and we were talking about Satanta in the race previous. He's been uh, in good form. He has. He'd be having no fly along Satanta and can run over the top of them, but we'll have to stop Patch of Theta, who's never gone a bad race. Nine starts, three wins, three seconds and three thirds. Hugh Bowman on board for Francis Loy, and he carried 135 pounds here, beating all but Sunlight Power. Who's been in really good form, uh, Sunlight Power, and uh, look, he, he's a horse that's showing he can carry the 135, no problems. Beauty Fitz coming down the outside there. He's come out of this race and won at his next start. And he is a rival here, so he's up and weight a little bit as well. But look, a really good run there from uh, Patch of Theatre, and he didn't give it away all the way down the straight. He's had a good season. Um, for me, he looks very tough to beat. He is uh, going in pool selections for sure on that patch of Theatre. Now, here is Beauty Fit winning. You mentioned how consistent he'd been. He used that speed last week. This was the Saturday meeting last weekend. Jumped out, took a trail. Followed Hasten Delight, gets out at the right time and beats him. Can he continue on his consistent form? Well, look, he has been going well. I, I didn't quite get him in because he's up seven pounds uh, for this one, so he has to carry 132. Now, in saying that, he did um, he did draw nicely in barrier number three, so he's definitely going to get his opportunity as uh, beauty fit, and you can see him coming through not around a horse, so it was a really good good ride there to do that. And that's Sunlight Power, who, he, who beat him in the start previous, and he did beat him in this. That is our second replay. One more to have a look at. Thriving Brothers, Lost Child finished well back in midfield respectively. Beauty Crescent runs second here. He's placed four from seven course and distance. Ruby Lot beats him in this. Zach actually rode Ruby Lot through on the inside to knock him off. Zach rides Beauty Crescent this week. Yeah, look, I think he's going to get his opportunity. Uh, he's run second off a, a lot uh, off this rating 
of uh, 79 and he's at a rating of 77 at the moment. So, look, I, th I think he's more than more than capable. Uh, his um, beauty crescent just hasn't been able to get his nose in front. He's gone through the four-year-old series, so he's re been in some pretty good races. And Lost Child's not the worst either. He's had a good season. He has. He's racing well. He's mm. Lost Child. But you were pretty keen on Patch of Thitter by the sound of it in that replay. Yeah, I'll make him the best of the day, actually. I thought he, he could win the last. So he's on top uh, to beat Beauty Crescent. Giddy Up was unlucky at his last start. And then Lost Child there on a minor line. One, two, eight and nine. And that is it. That is the race by race preview for Shartin's season finale on Sunday, meeting number 88. 11 turf races on the A course from 4 o'clock.